Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Good evening. Ma. All right, so you, I can be heard. Um, yes, where, where do I even start from? Okay, let me start by saying thank you to Ife for this privilege. I am humbled. I am, I am amazed that you even thought to call me and invite me. You know, I've never spoken about parenting on any platform before, but because I am constantly learning, I am so excited to share whenever I have conversations with people. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will build upon whatever it is we're going to talk about this evening. So Amen. first of all, I'm grateful to you, Ife, for the chance to have known you. You know, you're such an amazing person from your undergraduate days at FUL. You were a devoted Christian girl, an outstanding student. I value you, Ife. I, and, I, and, and the work that you do for your generation, I don't take our relationship for granted. I still remember the day I asked you what first lady to be means. <laughs> you know, you, were, you know, I, and really, you just you gave me an answer that I don't, I don't want to share. But I look forward to the day that your self fulfilling prophecy will come to pass, and it surely will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So to everyone listening, my name is Alero Richards. I am a lecturer in the Department of Mass Communication at Federal University Lokoja. I am also, in fact, primarily, I am a writer. I am a ghost writer. I'm a project manager. I'm a wife. I'm a mother. And I just, you know, somehow by God's help, juggle a lot of things. But I'm grateful to God for this privilege. So quickly, I'll just say, Holy Spirit, take over. Let the words of my mouth be what you want your children, your daughters to hear tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you, you cause these words to be on their hearts, to be like a, a seed in their fertile hearts in Jesus' name. And they will learn and they will hit the ground running and they, they will run with these words in the name of Jesus. Parenting is a very critical activity. And, but we know that with you holding our hands, we will raise godly seed in this generation. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you will help us in the little time that we have to be able to share value. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you. Thank you. I have, there's so much to say. I actually wrote every single thing I want to say because I know that I can, I, I tend, you know, to say other things and, you know, get lost in transit. So I have to write everything and I wrote nine pages. I beg you. <laughs> <laughs> you just have to listen okay yes. when when Ife told me about this program i just i said god where do i want to start from because there is so much and i beg you sisters don't take your parenting journey for granted see uh, parenting is the most important job on on earth because you are raising another human being parenting is is more important than any other activity that you have you may be a professional you may be anything but parenting is your core job any other thing is a side hustle just keep that one somewhere you know so i spent you know a lot of time just arranging what i wanted to say and i and i asked god what exactly do you want me to say so he began to put my thoughts in perspective you know so when i when i get the opportunity to talk about anything the first thing i like to do is a little forest clearing you know i call it clearing the 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 um the forest of our parenting mindset because i'm talking to you i'm 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 i'm, I'm telling you something that uh is going to affect your mind now so let us address our mindsets first okay the book of proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says train up a child in the way he should go so that when he's old he will not depart from it what does this tell us this tells us that there is a way that each child should go okay even if you have 10 children there is a way that each of these 10 children should go god is not raising robots on the earth every mm. child is unique every child is special every child is complete this verse also tells me that there should be no basis for comparing one child to another even if you have twins you cannot compare tie to candy you cannot compare your first daughter to your second daughter your first son to you can't please don't even try to do it okay there should be no basis for comparing, but just partner with God who created that child to train the child in the way that he should go. 
okay? There is no single child on planet Earth that is like your child. If you have two children, there is no single child. Okay, my children's names are Chowe and Essie. There is no child on Earth that is like Chowe. There is no child on Earth that is like Essie. Even though they are sisters, they are unique. They are unique individuals. So you are raising unique individuals, people that the world has never seen before. So you must be intentional. I know that uh, we have a topic, but my own topic for today is parenting with intention at the foundation. I tell you, if you have toddlers now, your children are still between zero to five, and you have the opportunity to hear me today, and you run with the things I'm saying, and you join a community, I promise you, your children will come out well. You will not, you will not be, you will not be bothered about the things that are running around that you can see in the society. So I'm going to give us 10 things right now to clear our mindset. Number one, a lot of people say that, oh, how my parents did it is how I will do it. Okay? It is a mindset. How my parents did it is how I will do it. But the truth is, the generation our parents lived in is different. Okay? The generation we were raised in is different. Okay? The generation we are raising our children in now is different. And one distinguishing factor in this generation is that today's children are digital natives. They were born with tablets under their armpits. Okay, the pervasive force of technology has taken over the world. So this world is a different place. This world is different from what it was 20 years ago. This world is different from what it was 50 years ago. Okay, so you cannot, please disabuse your mind from it. You cannot do parenting the way your parents did it. The truth is you are raising your child for a changing world. You are raising for a, your, your children for a world that you might not see okay you are training so you have to be intentional you have to be futuristic in your thinking you have to be a continuous learner i cannot say this enough you have to be a continuous learner you can never get to that place where you have arrived in your parenting no parenting is a journey nobody has arrived at any destination we did not bring parenting knowledge from heaven so an intentional parent is not a perfect parent for one who is continuously learning number two some people will say, well, I don't need parenting knowledge. I turned out well. I turned out well. You can say, okay, because everybody says I'm good, I turned out well. But when you take random samples of human behavior in our country or in many places in the world, can you truly say that many people turned out well? The evidence of poor parenting is in every sector of life. It is in the corruption that takes place in high and low places. It is the way we honor and dishonor people and constituted authority. It is the way we express our views on social media, the confidence or lack of it with which we approach life, the way we think, the way we share our opinions, the way we express our sexuality, the way we choose our spouses, the way we behave in our marriages. Many of us were not properly brought up. Brought up. And I say this with every sense of respect and responsibility. Many of us were only told what not to do. We were not told what to do. All right. Many of us were also raised by parents who lacked emotional intelligence, parents who punished us, flogged us for every mistake we made, parents who shouted so much at us that we lost our self-confidence. Mm -hmm. Many of us are carrying trauma that is not healed inside of us, that we are sick. And many of us secretly or openly resent our parents for what they did to us. So please go back and look at your life. Did you really turn out well? And I'm not saying that all parents did a bad job, but I'm saying that in many places and for many people, let me give, let me tell you about myself, for example. My mom was this, my dad was an intentional parent, but my mom, I will say an intentional parent is a parent that is learning, a parent that understands the child and not wants, just wants the child to understand you, okay? So I'll say that my mom was, let me not say she was unintentional, but because she was not properly parented, she couldn't give it. Her parents divorced when she was five. Okay? My mom went through a lot of trauma that even now she's still going through. My mother resented her father for more than 50-something years because of what he did to her. Okay? He married many wives. They mistreated my mother. And my mother was a very, very strict person. Okay, very disciplined, very everything, 
always beaten and all that. But she was always saying it's because she wanted us to be better. But you do you know that your children do not understand. They cannot, they cannot connect your motives with what you are doing. They are too small. I didn't understand all what my mom was always saying, oh, beating us because of because she loved us and all that. Mm -mm, I could not understand it. I resented my mother when I was growing up. Okay? There was a time that my brother and I, even, you know, we thought about going to live under the bridge. We packed our bags one day. We said, we're going to live under the bridge in Lagos. That this woman was just too harsh. If my mom dad wanted to beat you, she would carry omorogun. I don't know if you know omorogun, this turning stick in the kitchen. And she would give you 24 on one hand. Even if you made a mistake, not, not that you did something wrong, but you made a mistake. You know, making a mistake is different from doing something bad. My mother would beat 24 strokes of the cane on one hand. It got to a point, my father had to tell my mom, see this Alero, don't beat her again. Because this child, the way you are beating her, I was, my mother did not understand me. And she did not, she did just want to understand anybody. But she wanted everybody to understand her. She just wanted to raise obedient children, academically sound children, and all that. But the truth is, when you are parenting, you are not just parenting the body of your child. You are not just parenting the mind of your child. You are parenting the heart of your child. You are parenting the heart of your child. As old as I am, I still think, every time I'm doing things for my children, I still think about my father, the things he used to say. The things my mother used to say. See, you are going to become the inner voice of your child when they grow up. So be careful of the things you say. Be careful of the things you do. Be careful of the tone of the voice that you use, for God's sake. Every time I think about my father, I smile. Every time I want to make a decision in my life, sometimes I just, what would my father have said? Okay? Don't think that because your child is small. Because your child is small, you are, your child's subconscious is opening. Okay? Mm -hmm. you, are, you are putting things inside the mind of that child. It is a lot of psychology, but it's also a lot of spirituality. Okay, so the fact that you are just a good person, oh, you turned out well, is not enough. For the most part of growing up, I did not have self-confidence. I didn't have a healthy self-esteem because my mother was always beating me. My father did not used to beat and was always around most of the time. But that little time that my mother would spend with you, just know that if she was not beating, she was shouting or she was just expecting you to be prim and proper. She was just expecting you to be perfect. Okay. So I can't really say that I turned out well. Now I'm beginning to reparent myself. I'm taking parenting classes. I'm seeing my faults. I'm, 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 I'm learning. Okay? I am on a journey. I am learning. And that's what I want all of us to do. Especially just come to a place of honest assessment of your life. Okay? And I told myself, I don't want to be like my mother. I prefer to be like my dad. I remember when I was when I wanted to get married, I told myself, I'm not going to marry a man that is not like my father. That I want to marry somebody. I'm not negotiating this marriage just for myself. I'm negotiating the marriage for my children. And I was telling God, I want to marry a man that was like my dad. And thankfully, my husband, in fact, he is just it with the kids. Okay? He's a good husband and he is a good father. I can't take that away. So it is really, really important. Don't just come out and say you turned out. I was talking to my brother who lives in the UK recently, and my brother was saying that my brother is not really has not really been intentional about his parenting. But from that period, I noticed that he began to become more in intentional. What was he saying? He said here in the UK, there are a lot of Nigerians, hardworking Nigerians, doing a lot of things, but many of them don't have self-confidence to take on big roles. Why? Because from their childhood, something has gone wrong. They beat, beating something out of them, all in the name of I want you to be an obedient child. So I want to hurry now. This, what I'm saying now, this, um, this, this mindset, I'm, this um, clearing the forest, this number two I'm saying is, people say I don't need parenting knowledge. We turned out well. Ask yourself, did I really turn out well? Am I confident about life? How do I talk to people? How do I relate with people? Am I always afraid to make friends? If you are a person that is always afraid to make friends, something is wrong some way. Just sit back and think about your life. Ask yourself, did I really turn out well? Number three, people will say, oh, parenting is not a big deal. No matter what you do, children will turn out however they want. That's a lie. There is a manual for good parenting and people are using it. The truth is, whether you like it or not, you are using the manual. 
is it that you are parenting from a place of knowledge or you are parenting from a place of ignorance an intentional parent my coach coach wendy always says that an intentional parent follows the plan and a goal the unintentional parent follows the crowd which one are you although children have different temperaments they have different personalities they have different behaviors you can deliberately program your child properly Go and read about people who have greatly influenced the world positively. You will find the obvious marks of an intentional parent crested on all of them. You can program certain aspects of your child's life. Let me give you secular examples. I was reading about Mark Zuckerberg, and I read that his father encouraged him to network the computers in the house to link with his dental office because his father was a dentist. You know, at that young age, there was nothing like Facebook. But Mark Zuckerberg was already, you know, his father was already encouraging him to do, you know, network the house with the office you know read about the founders of google larry page and sergey brain those two guys their parents were professors you know of mathematics computer science and all their, their parents left books it tech books for them to be reading all right at that young age their parents developed their tech skills from childhood so you can program your child mentally you can program your child spiritually you can program your child look at people in the other of, of other faiths, Muslims, for instance, there is a way they are programming their children. So when you see people, you know, uh, people being indoctrinated, doing all manner of things, they have been programmed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now look at people who are royalty, kings. Do you notice that kings are raised differently? Go and read about the late Queen Elizabeth. Read about how she was raised. There is a way you raise a king. If you know that you are building a skyscraper, you are going to take a lot of time to build the foundation. Okay. If you know you are going to build a shanty, you will not really bother. So think about your child. What kind of child are you raising? Are you raising the skyscraper kind of child? A child that is going to go places in the world? Or are you just raising a shanty child? Okay? It will determine the kind of intentionality you put at the, at, uh, uh, you know, as the foundation. All right? Another thing people say is, I don't need parenting advice. I don't need community for this journey. Community. The truth is you need community. The world is changing. Many people are comfortable with joining all manner of group. You can join entrepreneurship group, church group, tech group. Now we are ladies with a different group. But when you want to raise your children, you say, I don't need anybody to teach me how to raise my child. Okay? You need to belong to a credible community where you can learn. The power of collective intelligence is something that money cannot buy. Trust me, you'll be amazed at how much knowledge you will get. There are no tips and hacks in parenting. Just do this, do this. There's no tip and hack. Okay? It is a process. Parenting is a process. It is all about you, the parent, not about the child. Okay? So, there are, um, parenting is about you. So, it's about working on yourself, becoming a better parent. So, you need a community. You need to invest in your parenting. And that's why I joined the Intentional Parent Academy run by Coach Wendy Ologi. Uh, if I knows it, it's a paid group okay when i okay you if you want to know more about it just go on youtube or facebook and find out the intentional parent academy you find out their prices and all that it is a paid group you know if you can pay a lot of money to learn project management pay a lot of money to learn anything you can pay to gain parenting knowledge trust me it is worth every dime i paid it is one of the best decisions i made about my parents so please look for a community I can re recommend the Intentional Parent Academy because it's a place I belong to. I've been there from um, December and I and I know all the things I've learned, not just for myself, not just for my kids, but for myself, okay? Another thing people say is that my goal is to raise obedient and academically sound children. That's all. Yes, that's fine. It's good to raise obedient children. It's good to raise academically sound children. But it is better to raise children who understand the language of honor and children that are independent thinking many people they cannot think independently because they have been programmed to always you know just obey the last order okay i am a lecturer i am an academic although i didn't start as an academic okay but i have worked with young people in the last 10 years i've worked with young people all through my career and i've come to realize that academically sound kids are not necessarily the smartest kids out there Academics is just one small part of what your children require to thrive in the world. Have you seen children that after acquiring all the degrees, they drop it somewhere and they go to find new paths in life? Have you also seen people who had first class in different fields, but in other aspects of their life, zero? 
they are not social, they are not spiritually inclined, they cannot think critically, they cannot take leadership roles. I'm not against raising obedient kids, though, but if everything you do is to force your child, every time it's just to force your child to learn math and English and to obey instructions, instead of teaching them to honor instructions and to honor people, you they will just end up paying lip service, doing everything you say. Allow your children to ask questions, no matter how silly the questions are. Allow your children to ask questions. Explain to them things, regardless of how young you think they are. The sixth thing is, parents in this generation say, oh, I don't need a media plan. My child is, is a baby. I don't need a media plan. Let me just put baby shark. You know, let them just be having tab. Let them just be using phone. One of the greatest disservice you will do to your child in this generation is just to put a phone or a tab in the hand of that child without having a media plan. For the records, children between zero and two years or children between zero and 18 months or two years don't need any exposure to screen or media. Take it from me. I made that mistake with my first child and I was not ready for the addiction that followed. My daughter is just four years old, but there was a time she became addicted to the screen. If you took it away from her, she will cry and cry and cry and cry. Excessive screen time can damage your child. It can disrupt the child's sleep. It can impair the attention and cognitive function of that child. I noticed that my daughter, the only time she paid attention at that time was when she was watching cartoon. And it's not that these cartoons are really teaching anything. They only teach nursery rent. Apart from that, what? The things that your children need to succeed in this age, they're not found on the screen. No? If I took away the cartoon for my daughter, she would whine and cry and cry and cry. Okay? If, it, if I ask her to focus on other things, she cannot really focus on other things, but she focuses straight on the, on the screen. And it was bad. I had to cut off the screen. When I started attending parenting classes, that was one of the things I did. I totally removed the screen. She would cry and cry and cry, but then I replaced it with other things. Thank God we already, we already had a reading program going on. Then I invested in more books and more toys and more, and more outdoor. Okay? Children who are always in front of the screen, they, are, they end up being socially awkward. At a point, my daughter did not even used to greet anybody. It's not like greeting is something that children don't struggle with. A lot of children struggle with greeting, okay? But she did not just want to play with anybody. She would just go on her own. She was socially awkward, okay? It also alters the brain structure of your child. It increases the risk of addiction. It can lead to compulsive behavior. Have you not noticed how your child reacts when you remove baby shark, when you remove all those things they're watching? So if screen time addiction continues to adulthood, children will not be able to focus on any other thing. You can make screen time work for your kids. Don't use screen as a nanny, okay? Some children just binge on TV, two hours, three hours, four hours, no. Let your children play with sand. Let your children play with water. Go and read about sand play and water play. If you want to know more, go and read about sand play and water play and how important it is for your child to be able to interact with the elements. Okay, use puzzles, buy toys, board books, activities. They are all over Instagram. You will find them. Your child doesn't always need to be entertained. You can allow boredom, allow your children to be bored. It's when the kids are bored that they begin to think up ideas and explore new things. Their minds will be engaged. The screen is just an illusion. It is a world of make-believe. If you don't curb it, your child will grow up thinking that everything must be like it is on TV. They want everything fast and quick. And if you don't give it to them, they will throw tantrums. Okay, replace excessive screen time. Parents, you too, you should also model replacement too. Not that every time you'll be holding your phone, there were times I just had to keep my phone down so that my child can see me doing other things like reading books. Okay, my daughter needs to see me doing artwork, coloring, coloring, drawing, cooking, playing. All right, I'm not binging excessively on Netflix. Do things with your children so that they will know that it's not all about phone, it's not all about tab. Okay, another thing people say is there is nothing wrong with using cane, and they will begin to tell us what the Bible says is true. But before you go about quoting Proverbs and the fact that your parents flogged you, just know that beating was never an African method of discipline. It was just introduced by colonial masters as a means to cow slaves into submission. If you are a good student of history, you will ask around. My grandmother did not go to school for long because she was a princess. Her father found out that the colonial teachers in those days in Wari, they were using cane. Okay, so her father withdrew her from the school. 
it was a taboo to beat children in those days because children were regarded as gods upon the earth. My father that told me this. All right. I also used to belong to the school of thought that caning is good. But when I began to take parenting lessons, I learned that beating is a lazy man's way of raising children. Beating is a lazy man's way of raising children. Essentially, discipline has nothing to do with the cane. Discipline is actually, the meaning of discipline is teaching, instilling counsel, making someone to do something. So why do we think that when it comes to children, we must use cane? Many of us went to university polytechnic. When you ask somebody, what is your discipline in the university? The first thing that comes to your mind is because of study, my discipline is mass come. The first discipline is English and literary studies. Other person's discipline may be ma um, mathematics. So discipline means being able to follow a process. It is what makes you wake up every day and prepare for work. That is discipline. It is what makes you good at whatever you are good at today. Discipline is what will make you carry a book from chapter one and finish it. Okay, so let's learn to separate discipline from punishment. What many of us do is simply reaction. We don't teach. I have two children. I've said it before, four and two. I don't have any cane in my house. And I, and I don't see any need for it. No matter how small your children are, you can teach them without flogging. Take it from me. I say this all the time. When I was growing up, I said it before, my father never used the cane. Never. But he was the one that was with us most of the time. All right? He, it was for my father. Before I entered secondary school, I already knew things like delayed gratification. And when I start saying it, people will be wondering, where did it come from? Because my father said it to me, delayed gratification, and he explained it. My father explained step-by-step -step method of problem solving. I'll remember that forever. He said the first thing when you want to solve a problem is call the problem by name. Agree that there is a problem and call it by name. My father taught me another thing. He who comes to equity must come to equity with clean hands. He said it. I had not entered secondary school because my father was always talking. He was always explaining. He was always saying things to me. He was always saying things to me and my siblings. Okay. I remember that at a very young age, my father disabused my mind from violence. He made us to learn a poem about not fighting. I remember that he would say, there was a poem he used to say, let dogs delight to bark and bite, for God had made them so. But little children, you should never let such angry passions rise. Your little hands were never made to tear each other's eyes. My father made us write it down. My father made us do a lot of things with that poem. That was a way to teach. Okay? I have never physically fought anybody with my hands. I've never beaten anybody. As in physically fought with anybody or even my siblings. Because my father told me that my hands were made to heal and not to destroy. My dad told me that my hands were made to touch lovingly and not to hit anybody. Okay? So you'll not be saying, oh, am I saying you should pamper your children? No. Over pamper? No. What I'm saying is you should not condone I'm not saying you should condone bad habits. What I'm saying is make a practice of using your words and not a stick, okay? Overpampering is when you overlook bad behavior, when you don't need it in the board, when you buy everything your child wants, whether they need it or not, when you protect them from the consequences of their actions, when you don't teach them how to speak kindly to people. That's when you are overpampering, okay? You would need to repeat the instructions, especially for young children. You need to repeat instructions, repeat corrections over and over again, all right? But parenting with intention, okay, is also parenting with patience. Many of us are praying to God to, to make us patient, patient, and then God give you a child. And you don't know that God is teaching you how to be patient, patient. So when your children are older, they will remember how you made them feel okay how your words made a difference many children who were flogged excessively growing up they grow up resent their to resent their parents okay if you are honest with yourself if you go down memory lane you will remember how much you hated to be flogged i hated to be flogged i i, I always wished that my mother could just explain what exactly she wanted all right i remember I've, I've said before how my brother and i wanted to go and live under the bridge all right, you will see even small children, they leave home and they don't they want to go to their friend's place and they don't want to come back because of the way their parents beat them. I know someone like that. Anytime she comes to my house, she doesn't want to go back. Okay, many young adults, even today, they don't want to go home during holidays. I work in a university, I see many students, they don't want to go home on break. You ask them, what's up? They don't want to go home. There's a problem in their families and all that. 
You get. They use school and as, as an excuse to run away from home. All right, now that your children are young, resist the temptation to, to, to shout, to yell angrily. It damages the brain of the child, okay? Learn to speak firmly but kindly to your child. Repeat instructions. Use routines, especially for young children. All right? The struggle that many young mothers have is that they don't have routine. Especially when school is on break, we will lose our minds. We begin to look for which grandma's place to take the kids to. And I'm not against grandma's house, so, okay? But you can also create a routine for them, even when they go to grandma's house. If not, they will watch TV from morning to night without doing anything. When I was, the first time I sent my children off to stay with my mom, I wrote down everything they should do at different times. I wrote the time for them to go out to play. Because if you leave them, they will stay in front of the TV. Okay, so you can have bath time. What you do during bath time, breakfast time, activity time, scribbling, sleeping, hand washing. You know, in the afternoon, they can do building blocks, they can do artwork, they can unstructured play. It is when my daughter stopped watching TV that I knew that she could sing. Okay, and she could do some other things. So include their hobbies and all that into their shadows. All right, some other people will say, I don't have time for parenting, I need to build my career, so I'll outsource parenting. I would employ a maid, I would, you know, do all that. But the truth is that parenting is an 18-year plan. I just learned this one last year. Parenting is an 18-year plan. Anything you do after your child turns 18 is called damage control. I said when I started, parenting is your main job. Your career is your side hustle. You are a co-creator with God, a custodian of the time, the talent, and the treasures of your child. And you are supposed to develop them to the glory of God. So no matter what kind of job you do, you must prioritize parenting. Many people plan for their wedding, but they don't plan for their parenting journey. You just enter and say, yes, I want two kids. But what is your plan for raising those two children? I understand that we live in a world where there's so much pressure to flaunt your career achievement. And there's nothing wrong with it. But parenting is not a job you can outsource. Nobody can parent your child for you. Okay? David was a man after God's heart in the Bible, but God did not parent David's children for him. Okay? Sometimes, because of our children, we take a lower paying job just so that we can be there for them. But trust me, just for a season, a time will come when your kids are independent enough and, you can, and you've given them wings to fly. Then you can have some more time to build a career. Some people marry very early so they can raise their children and they later go back to work. While some, you know, they build a career first, then slow down a bit to raise their children. Whatever choice you make is fine. Just determine that you need to have time for parenting. If you don't strengthen your parenting foundation today, you will pay the price tomorrow. So why not pay the price today and reap the benefits tomorrow? Another thing some people will say is, oh, I don't need to raise my children to be too spiritual. They have to find God for themselves. But I don't want to believe that any member of ladies with a difference is on this table as much as you can indoctrinate your children with godly values the world does not have a good agenda for your child just look at how early children are being exposed to trends like homosexuality drug addiction sexual perversion so teach your child your faith no matter how small they are read the bible to your children prioritize family devotions let your children find you reading the bible and praying let them see you living out your faith my mother, as tough as she was, she was the one that taught me how to pray. She, I saw my mother live out her faith. I love singing hymns today because my mother was a walking hymn book. Her own grandmother used to sing, you know, in the morning. I remember she would say, Wasa adura, oro, kunleka gbadura, adura ni okba, Christian, lati ba olorunri. I don't, I want to believe that everybody understands you, but if you don't understand, it means come to morning prayer. Kneel down, let us pray. Prayer is the walking stick with which the Christian walks with God. So show your children your own God so that they will not be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine in the world and start early. You also need to be firmly rooted and grounded in Christ as a woman so that you'll be able to give responses to the many questions about faith that your children will ask. Okay, they will ask you questions later in life. Many believers are running from pillar to post today because they were not properly taught and they don't even want to give themselves to learning. Okay, they cannot sit down for one hour, two hours Bible study. Some, they don't even know what it means to be born again. Your children will struggle with faith if you don't communicate it to them. Start now when you are young. Have you seen how people from other faiths indoctrinate their children? 
They go to Karatu. They do holy months. They do all these things. But how many of us deliberately teach our children to memorize scripture? Your child is not too young to start learning if only you'll be intentional. There's something I say every morning when my children wake up. I touch them. I say, I'll say, Chowe, you have the ears of the learned, the tongue of the learned, and the mind of Christ. I'll say, you grow in wisdom, in character, and in the knowledge of God. And then I'll say, from a child, you know the Holy Scriptures, just like Timothy, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. So you can be deliberate about your children's spiritual growth. It's important. All right? Another thing some people is, will say is, oh, my marital problems are different. They cannot affect my parenting activities. The truth is, you are not only raising toddlers, you are raising future parents. So know it from the beginning. As you are looking at your two-year-old child, look at a future parent. You are raising another parent. So you are the model of good or bad marriage that your child is seeing. I recently found a beautiful song on the internet and I will encourage us to listen to the lyrics and you also share with our husbands. The song is called Like My Father and the... um. The 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 uh the composer of the song is Jax, a lady called Jax. Okay, she wrote a song for her mother and father. You know, she described how her father and her mother exemplified true love, and now she needs a man who will love her the way her father loved her mom. So your children are watching your marriage. Ensure that what you are showing them is a good example, so that you can help yourself. You can help the, your children to thrive. So while learning all these things, you also you'll be reparenting yourself. All right. Let me quickly give us. Wow, I'm running out of time. Let me quickly give us some characteristics because if I told me that, oh, many of us are young, we're raising toddlers and all. Let me tell you something. Your child is special. Your child is unique, but all toddlers have some things in common. They make a lot of mess. Hmm? Parenting is a messy affair. It's not only your... In fact, go and look at how my parlor looks now. Books here. This one here. Scattered. All right? But at the end of the day, you tell them, pack your stuff. All right? If you are not ready to be a full-time cleaner, you are not ready to be a parent. Children make a lot of mess during potty training, when they are learning to eat, when they are scribbling, when they are doing art. They will scatter your arranged clothes. They will wear your shoes. They will wear your clothes. My children, they are always picking my, my clothes and my shoes to wear. So I've dedicated like two for them to use and be doing Superman cape. You know, I've dedicated one for them to be backing baby. Things like that. Children make a lot of mess. They will use your lipstick to write on the wall. They will tear paper. They will enjoy themselves. So parenting is about you, all right? Not about the child. Now, young children are also very curious. All children, all toddlers are curious, all right? Your job as a parent is to preserve the curiosity of your child. Very important, okay? Unfortunately, many, many people are flogged out. They flogged out the curiosity from their children such that the children cannot ask questions, they cannot talk, okay? So, curiosity is what makes your children touch wires, drink harmful substances, break glass, enter unsafe places, but your job is to ensure that the curiosity of your child is preserved while keeping them safe. You need to keep your children safe, but they need to be curious as well, all right? As Anytime your child does something you don't like as a toddler parent, it's not the child's fault, but it is yours. A child has to be a child. You have to be a parent. A child's brain doesn't fully develop until the age of 25. Understand this one today. Your child's brain is not developed until the age of 25. So if you're always beating your child for doing something, you have not helped the child. Instead, you are killing the child. You are not allowing the child to learn. Research has shown that one reason why children don't excel in sciences is because their curiosity has been destroyed. Please read more about that. I have to run. Another thing is that children at this age, they explore everything, including their bodies and the bodies of their playmates. Unfortunately, parents beat their toddlers for touching their private parts. Instead of using that as a teachable moment to do appropriate sex education, at the toddler age, what you should be teaching your children is privacy. Don't dress in front of your children. Don't let your children be in rooms where other people are dressing, okay? You encourage them not to go to the girls' toilet during school hours. Things like that. If they are boys, if they are girls, you can teach them. You can teach them, okay? You can say, I want to dress up, uh, Ire, give mommy some privacy. You can say that. It's sex education. You don't need to open your mouth and say everything. But at this stage, what they need to understand more 
is about privacy all right another thing is children at this age need to play outdoors and not to be glued to the screen i've said it time and time again this is an age where they begin to interact and to learn social skills a child who is glued to a device is becoming addicted and if not curtailed it can be a problem okay these other things that they did that they do like i said coloring puzzles they will help to build what is called executive functioning skills you can read more about it executive functioning skills and these things start in childhood they are able to adapt they are able to plan they're able to monitor themselves control themselves working memory working memory okay time management and organizations organization when you are doing all these other things your children are able to learn even cooking you know is important for small children to see you cook and to help in the kitchen you know is important you can't find all these things on the screen but you can find them in play you know they need to play young children need to play don't be afraid to let your children go out and play i know many of us are I don't want our children to play with sand but don't be afraid get on that sand make a mess to let your child see you play is important all right children in this age are also attention seeking all of them attention is like food to them so as much as you can don't neglect a child children can also use negative behavior to get your attention all right you need to understand that okay another thing is that children at the young age they undergo a lot of bodily changes you know and they can be throwing tantrums today they can just know that every behavior is communication every behavior of your child is communication my daughter wants to be independent she's just two now but she's trying to tell me now that mommy i'm independent she doesn't want me to wear her dress for her she doesn't want me to do anything for her if you do anything for her she'll tell you to undo it and she'll do it by herself okay so this is not the time to beat okay at this stage she's already learning decision making so if i want her to choose a dress i'll bring her like three dresses i like i'll say oh yeah let's say choose one and she'll choose the one she likes okay it's important for children to do these things all right another thing is that at this age your children are watching you they are modeling your behavior so be careful of what you do don't just say what you like do what you like your children are soaking up your words at this the children are doing what is called copy and paste okay so model the kind of behavior and speech that you want them to exhibit if you have domestic help speak to them kindly you'll find that your, your children will also speak to them kindly too all right if you want your children to respect the gate man call the gate man mr mohammed mr james mr this you'll find out that your children do that as well all right at this stage also children don't do everything that you say they don't do everything that you say. Sometimes my daughter will tell me, no, mommy, I don't want to do this. No. But later on, I'll have to call her. Yeah, this is why I want you to do it. All right? Sometimes they don't want to pack their shoes. They don't want to pack their toys. Sometimes, Christian parents, your children don't want to say amen to pray when you are praying. They don't want to sing. It's normal. All right? Sometimes they don't want to greet. This is not enough reason for you to scream and yell and flog, but to continue, continuously teach them good habits from bad habits, positive behavior from negative, all right? At this stage also, children can be wasteful. They can do all manner of things, but the onus is on you as a parent, you know, to parent them. I usually tell people that when you see, um, when you say, oh, my, ch my child went to drink uh, medicine and finish everything, I ask the parent, where do you put the bottle? You put it on the table. What is written on the bottle? It says, keep this medicine out of the reach of children. If they are holding the bottle, it means that you kept it somewhere within their reach. If they are playing with anything you don't want, it's because you put it there. I remember I said curiosity is important for children. All right? Sorry, please. I'll just take like four more minutes of our time. If you... So intentional parenting from the cradle provides a window. Okay. Provides a window of opportunity. For you as a parent to learn different things. Number one, the learning style of your child. Do you know how your child learns? This is the best time to learn. Now that your child is a toddler, there are children who are visual learners. They, they, they learn faster when you show them things like charts. Okay? When you show them practical. There are some children that are auditory learners. They learn when you sing, when you say things to them. They pick it up very fast. Then there are children that are kinesthetic. They just learn. Okay? Please take out time to read these things read about these things that i'm saying it's very important another thing is intentional parenting will need you to learn the love language of your child do you know that your child is an individual your child is a love being all right so 
you need to just the way you read a uh, love language when you wanted to get married and all that there's also love language of children and it's still the same thing okay every child has a love language although at the early stages you need to employ everything all right words of affirmation touch gifts quality time acts of service but as they grow along the way you will need to know what is the love language of this my child okay some of us may have end up having children who are hugging machines nothing is wrong with the child okay some of us have children who don't do well except you you continue to affirm them all right and that brings us to the temperament or the personality of your child our current read in the intentional parent inner circle is why you act the way you do is a book um a an old book by tim lahai it will be very important for you to read that book if you can get the book read it you'll see that children your child is either a phlegmatic child a sanguine child a melancholic child or a choleric child you know i don't have time to explain all that right now but i'm sure any of us have heard about it so the way you describe yourself to as a sanguine child some of you may even have sanguine children then you see your children jumping up and down doing different things and you start beating the child why don't you calm down try to learn how to channel those uh, those that energy of your child appropriately and all that so know that your child is different your child your children have different personalities even if you have 10 children 10 of them will not be the same okay know that um, apart from that, I've said it, let's resist the temptation to beat your, know, it, it, it's not going to be an easy task, okay? Many of us are first-time parents, we don't really know much, our background and all that. But please, you, you need to be intentional. You need to be intentional, you need to join a community, you need to read. Many of us have read books about our course of studies, we've read hundreds of books. We've read books on business and all that. But in parenting, we have not read one book. We don't want to read anything. You need to read. You need to learn. Okay? I've said it before. How you speak to your child becomes the inner voice. So talk to your child like as if they are the best and they are the most important people. And watch what they become. I read this. I, I watched this film. Uh, it's called King Richard. It's the film of Venus and Serena's father. I'm sure we all knew when um, Serena retired and all that. Her father is still alive. When I watched that film, I was very, very impressed. The man told Z Venus, his first daughter, that you are going to become the first, the first and um, and the best or something. You are going to be the the, uh, the, f the first and the world champion. You know, that's what he told Venus. And that's what she went on to become. Then he told Serena that she's going to become the greatest of all times. I tell you, those were self-fulfilling prophecies. And if you go back and you know you read about uh, Serena and Venus Williams, you see that Serena Williams is, called, is regarded as the greatest of all times. And that was what her father told her when she was growing up, that she was going to be the greatest of all times. So use a mantra, okay? Tell yourself, my words have power. I'll use it well. Also try to connect with your children. Children will do better when they are calm. The calmer and more connected you are, the more secured your child is. <sighs> if I, I don't know if anybody has any question. Well, we are even enjoying it. We don't want it to stop. <laughs> I know it's very fast, but I just needed, you know, like I said, I have a lot to say. I have a whole lot to say and I still have so much to say. But then, please, if possible, I encourage us join a community. Learn. There's a lot to learn. There is a whole lot to learn. I don't know if anybody has any questions. You can use this time to take questions. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, my like. This is so enlightening, like so much. Thank you. We're really very grateful, ma. Please, um, sisters, questions. If you have questions, it's a good time to ask now. Please don't come to ask if you're later. I'm also in this learning process. <laughs> Just raise up your hand. I will I will unmute you immediately if you have any question or you leave it in the chat room on the telegram channel if you don't want to, if you can't speak where you are right now. So let's just take one or two questions. So I'm waiting for our questions. I'm waiting for our questions. So while I'm waiting for our question, I think I personally have a question. So about this not beating. Okay. Oh, let, let me take Dami's question first. She's raising her hand. Okay, Dami, you have the floor. 
That means you can unmute. Um, hello, Dami, are you there? Okay, I'm not sure she's there. Okay, so um, let me ask this question. So I have a two-year-old, and with this, we shouldn't be. I am trying. I have, especially since the day you personally told me, I have been trying so hard <laughs> not to be. But sometimes that's a little. It's who can be at the extreme that. I'm just, I'm just, I don't want to use the word frustrated. Like, I'm just standing and I'm like, you're just two years old. How come you're not listening to what I am saying? Like, what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to hold our emotions? Are these extreme cases where it seems like these children are not listening to what we are saying and they keep doing the things you are saying they shouldn't do? Okay, let me give a practical scenario. For instance, at my store, when he really returns from school, he doesn't want to stay in the store with me. He always wants to go to the next store or the next the next two stores i'm always running after him and sometimes i have to attend to customers at the same time and i try to make him understand i want you to sit here i give him something to eat i give him something to play with but this boy still wants to go out i try bringing him back all the time but he still wants to go out so this is just like one out of many scenarios what do you how do you really like what's your suggestion to us like holding our emotions together are these extreme cases where it looks like this student want to embarrass us in public <laughs> um i don't know if i should take the, the another person is raising her hand maybe i should take a question before you answer mine too man okay good evening i hope i'm audible now wow. okay dami we can hear you all right good evening everybody thank you so much now um so much things that i've got tonight so this is my cousin around my son or two. Uh, <laughs> that we, okay, myself and my ex. Damn, I don't know if it's just so me, but I can't hear you very clearly. Okay, okay, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. All right, good. So um, we have a question because I'm connecting with my husband. And it's around our two year old also. So, um, I am trying to, as much as possible, ensure that he does not pick, um, you know, behaviors outside. Because I notice that he's someone that observes and he does whatever he observes, whether within the um, family or even outside the family. So you were talking about um, allowing our child to be social or to go out and play. And so we have neighbors around, but I try to, as much as possible, when we are coming back, don't go up the street, don't come downstairs. He wants to stay down, he wants to play. But I'm always scared of, you know, him trying to stay longer with the um, kids of neighbors. And that's because I realized that he picks up, um, you know, he observes and then he just does whatever anybody does. So I don't know how um, I can just, you know, bridge that gap between him being sociable, him, you know, relating with people outside and um, also trying to be himself, not um, picking other people's um, behavior. You know, of late also, he, he tries to, like, he wants to ride the bicycle off um, at one of our neighbor's kids, and it's always becoming an embarrassment. Each time we are coming into the compound, the bicycle is there, he will cry, he will make noise, he will roll on the floor, you know, and at some point, I don't want to beat him, but then I just have to, because I'm just like, you're embarrassing me for every sick. And, you know, I have to just, I was forced to just go and get, you know, a bicycle, and at the end of the day, I still don't even feel comfortable going, taking him downstairs to ride the bicycle around the compound, because I'm just trying to avoid him picking um, behavior from other kids, so I don't know, I, I don't know how you can just help out with that, man. thank you. Okay, oh. um, at a, at a little, there is another question right now, and should we take that, or you answer this two first, ma? Okay, let me answer the two first, because i'll answer the last person's question first because i'm also i also have that kind of situation all right i don't want my children to learn bad things okay i have a four-year-old and a two-year-old but i ha also have neighbors i have one particular neighbor my daughter is always saying things that are naughty i tell my children those are naughty things but the thing is from my house i'm already teaching my children my value system because you cannot tell your child not to play. If your child goes to school, do you know the people in the child's school? Do you know what the child picks up? 
but you are seeing you have a neighbor you can already see what the child is doing all right one of the things they made us learn in our parenting academy is a uh, your family uh value system mission and vision write it put it in a frame hang it on the wall so what i do every night i call my children i carry my family vision i say who are we we are the omijis a family rooted and grounded in the love of god my four-year-old and two-year-old can say these things then i say what are our core values number one integrity do the right thing even when no one's watching they'll say it number two spirituality though in this world we are not of this world they'll say it number three empathy show compassion and be kind they'll say it number four uh, authenticity to thy own self be true number five honor everyone is valuable so i tell my children these are our core values my two-year-old knows what it is i'll say you are going out to play with this person this person says this this person says that but children of god don't say this your children are still going to be exposed you cannot be be overprotective. there was a time i didn't like my children we don't have neighbors in my house in lagos but i didn't like my children going out to play and i realized that i've been traumatized because my mother too did not allow us to go out to play your children need to interact social interaction so you teach your child let your child go and be the influencer okay let your child go and be the peer pressurer if there's a word like that all right teach your children what they need to know that's why i said beating will not solve anything teach open your mouth teach you have the tongue of the learned as a wise mother as a wise father open your mouth and teach your children what you want them to hear what you want them to know when my children go out to play i will tell them don't say naughty things and if anybody says naughty things say if you continue saying naughty things i will stop playing with you see your child is smart don't underestimate that that child have your child is actually a well of wisdom okay and when my children go out to play they'll tell me this person said this this person said that i'll say what did you say she'll say oh i said she should not say it again if not i'll stop playing with her see your children will change the world you cannot overprotect. and again we have this is a, a, a social media generation a tech world your children are still going to interact in school they are going to do naughty things i'm already teaching my children about privacy give your body some privacy if my daughter doesn't want to be her aunt, i'll say give your body some privacy sometimes i'll go out i'll hear them play this one will be saying bomb bomb that one will be saying bomb bomb out and i'll tell my daughter i say Chloe, everybody's body is private see this is the opportunity for you to teach your children i have children in my compound who don't who are always saying naughty things but it's a, a good opportunity for you to also befriend that family befriend the children begin to positively influence those children through your own child okay you can't choose your friends your children's friends but you can you can you can you can you can instill your value systems in your children so that when they go out there they're able to know the difference my children will come and say um this person said so 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 thing it was a naughty thing to say and i told her children of god don't say it my children are four my children are four and two i'm not telling you what i don't do all right another thing you 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 uh, if you're talking about your your uh, little child that comes to the shop you tell him to sit down it just goes to show you that your child is a sanguine child and you if from the little i know about you you are a sanguine person your child is like you you don't want you are you are up and about am i lying you're not lying but... you are up and about you are everywhere and if you don't allow that child to express himself the child will become <laughs> depressed have you not heard of depression in young children yeah. all right you can make your shop full of activity like i said you have to have time you just have to make out time i don't know how long you spend in the shop but they, there has got to be a time where you close the shop and go home and and, and spend time with that child okay or you tell him that don't go out stay in the shop when it's so so, so time we'll go home we'll play we'll do this children are different it's not all children that you tell to sit down that they will sit down the children that you tell to sit down are melancholic and phlegmatic children they will sit down if you tell them sit down for money to rest, they can sit. all right <laughs> sorry sorry so you cannot tell a sanguine child especially a core sanguine child 
to sit down in one place. The child will not listen. All right? So you have to just create time for activity. Create time for activity. All right? Children want to play. They need to play. They don't understand. Okay? They can't understand that you have shop, that you have wanting to do. You have to create time. When I get back from work, I don't do anything. I, I after eating, I remove my clothes too. I join them outside because they are still they are still a bit too small to be left alone. All right. Do you understand? So you just have to find time. You have to create time. Have a time. Do you have a time that you close your shop? Yes, yes. What time? Um, I close sometimes. 5 p.m. to come over with him, then I return after his dad is back home. Okay, you return to the house or you return to the shop? No, I return to the shop after his dad is back home. So. Okay, but creating time is very important. Creating time to play is very, very important. How your child will feel that you love him is the time you spend with the child, okay? But there are other children who just like to go out to play. It's, it's, it's natural. It's natural. That's why I said, if you can read uh, why you act the way you do by Tim Lahai, you will see these things. There are some children who cannot. Their activity level is hyper. Mm -hmm. I have a child like that in my compound. If we take her to church or anything, she goes with my children. She is always coming to our house. She's always everywhere. If we go to church, we'll go and stand with the pastor on the altar. You get it's just like she's just three years old. That is natural tendency of the natural tendency of a child. You know, other children, oh, they want to play with other kids. You should you should count yourself lucky that your child, you know, is exhibiting these things and you can see them. All right. So you just have to make out time. And your child is not is not embarrassing you by going to other people's shops. In the evening, you can call your child, talk to the child, you know. Talk to that child like an adult. Use words. Iwe, when mommy says, don't go out, please just stay. Hmm? If you stay in the shop, you watch what mommy is doing. There are things you can say to the child. You don't have to shout and beat and mm -mm. No, you are doing a great service to the child. Because at that stage, the child doesn't understand what it means to sit down in one place. Sit down in the shop. He wants to play with sand. He wants to play with water. Okay? More toys more books do you have a reading time for the child you need to have time to be reading to the child every day read to your child every day have time to play make time a child's biggest need is attention you just have to give him that attention all right so find a way find a way you will find a way if it's for you to close your shop earlier let people connect with you online and all that just find a way all right Find a way. And for the person who doesn't want her children to interact, I tell you, at least you can see your neighbor's children. What about the ones in school that you cannot see? The other places your child is going to get to. So start teaching your child your value system from now. What is your family's uh, 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 mission? What is their vision? What are their core values? Start telling them now. Start telling them now. Okay? So when they go out and they recognize evil, they can see it. All right? Have I answered your question? Ma, yes, ma, you have one. Um, there were, uh, Mrs. Dami Adekoya, do you still want to ask your question? Uh, Mrs. Dami Adekoya, or oh, we can only take one more. Mrs. Uh, Ipite Kumo Kende. There were just, okay, God's will. Let's say God's will. I, God's will, you can unmute self. Are you there? Yes, yes. Good evening, Ma. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so much, Mrs. Alero. God bless you. I have a very serious question. My daughter is very sensitive. I don't use the word emotional. And I noticed in her school, I think she's the youngest in her class. But I and at some point I didn't want to believe it was bullying. I just felt oh, I just feel it's something they do at their age. My daughter is calm, very calm, but she always come back home to complain of her classmates either doing hitting her or pinching her, beating her, or telling her wrong stuff like 
maybe you're not beautiful i'll not play with you again and all those things get to her one day she came back so sad and depressed she's three years old she was so sad it was she couldn't eat she couldn't do anything i had to call her what's the problem she started crying she was crying i've never seen her in that mood she said she doesn't want to go to her school again that nobody loves her and they keep beating her they keep saying go away don't play with me don't um don't play with us i will not play with you again and all i didn't want to believe it she was so hot so i i had to pray i still asking for wisdom because i didn't want to go and make a scene in the school so it continued one day she came back and said she called the the child's name that she put her two hands behind her and hit her head on the table and did it again and again the following day my daughter started running temperature and she didn't go to school for like a week because malaria and all from just from hitting her head it led to something else so i had to go to the school and i made my complaint i wasn't happy and all and the proprietor was like oh sorry um they'll look they'll look at the case they'll investigate blah 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 and that's how it ended i didn't even get to ask again and this someone she says the affirmation we teach her but i want to know is it am i doing something wrong by telling her not to retaliate or telling her to be peaceful the her teacher told me i should begin to teach her to retaliate when someone hits her I should teach her to hit the person back and one thing i you know I, I i told the auntie clearly that we have values i won't teach my child the world is already violent i won't add to it so like that and like that. so in that case to be sincere as much as i pray and i seek counsel it's not something i'm comfortable with so i've made up my mind to change her school what if i change her school what if i take her to another school and so i want to know is this thing particular to their age is this something i'm not doing or is this something my child needs to know or oh, please i need help hi um sorry what's the name god's will god's will I thought it was somebody yeah. else. It's, it's wonderful to know that you are here. I would say that <laughs> you are you. doing all the right things. You are doing all the right things. Your child is still too small, okay, to defend herself and to cope with bad behavior. So that is going to work on and you are doing the right thing. You need to either change the child's class or change the school. Oh, okay. okay. I would like to say that your child is just like me. Your child. I would place the temperament of the child as a melancholic child. A child yeah. who needs affirmation. You just need to yeah. start with child affirmation. Yeah. Okay. Yes, no. You don't encourage violence. And for the teacher of your child to already be saying that the child needs to retaliate, just know that the teacher too doesn't know what she's doing. Sorry yeah. to say, but she doesn't know what she's yeah. doing. All right? Yeah. If my yeah. younger daughter is beating my older daughter, I told her. Your hands are for flame. Don't use it to beat people. Okay? Mm. So it is doing all the right things. Okay? You are mm. doing all the right things. Is it that you change the class? You get a more understanding teacher. For children like this, you have to be more intentional. Because yeah. like I said, you, just, you are not just uh, uh, raising the body or the mind of your child. You are raising the heart of your child. You are raising mm. your child so if mm. you leave your child like this your child will feel that you don't love her mm. right? your child will know all these things sometimes it's better for us to take our children to smaller schools smaller mm. schools that understand values okay mm. that know what they are doing than for us to take them to big school with big name with children yeah. who are not whose parents are not intentional that's another yeah. thing you need to take mm. your children to you, sometimes you will not really know whether they are intentional might but you, yeah. you, if you go to PTA meetings, you can interact with uh, children, yeah. teacher, um, parents of yeah. other kids and know what are the values of this parent. It's easy to know. It is easy to see. All right? Those people who beat now at home, that's what they do. Is it yeah. that they are being fed by their parents or they have caregivers who are beating them or they have senior ones at home that beat them too, like that? Yeah. And you yeah. are not doing that to your family. Your child yeah. is still. Your child still needs that love and affection. Your child cannot yet stand up for herself. All right? Although you can teach her to stand up for herself, to use her words to speak. Okay? You need to develop that communication aspect of your child so that your child knows what to say at different times. But right now, since it is traumatizing for her, you need to take her away from that class or take her eventually away from the school because 
for Christ's sake, your child's well being is priority. All right? You are yeah. doing all, yeah. all the right things mm -hmm. according to what you said. Mm -hmm. But the child is mm -hmm. too small to defend herself. And I see that big picture of it. It's too beautiful to go through that trauma piece. Her name is Harmony. Her name is Harmony. Is her name, yeah. is her name, is her name not Harmony? Yes, her name is Harmony. Your daughter's name is Harmony, is it? Is it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you are raising her to to so, so live in peace and harmony with people. Ah, and we cannot we cannot begin to encourage that culture right now. We can't, please. Is that you change the class, mm -hmm. have an interaction with the teacher, introduce your child to the teacher. Tell the teacher this much. If if it's a school, she doesn't know what they are doing. You tell you this is how my child is. Okay, this is what I do to my child. This is what I don't do. I would I would appreciate it if you pay a little more attention. All right, so you know my child okay it doesn't it doesn't take much you know to do, all right but that child like i said she's a melancholic child she may have some sanguine tendencies but she is a melancholic child primarily and her heart her self-confidence needs to be intact one of the things you need to do is to change the school or change the class all right yeah thank you sorry ma, because the... i have interrupted Yet I've interacted with the teacher many times. The teacher is literally avoiding me. I think she feels I'm troublesome or I'm too involved. That am I the only parent? I know the, so another parent was saying that ah, how many teachers is thinking you are overly involved with um what they do. That I'm not the only parent in the school. Why is it looking like I want to be involved with literally everything? So she avoids me. When she sees me, she just she, many times she gives the caregiver harmony's bag and lunch bag to come and give me outside. She doesn't face me. So it she does that means she doesn't love your child. Your the teacher doesn't love your child. There was something my coach said recently. She said, if you get to a place yeah. and you are not comfortable, leave that place. You are not a tree. Hmm. It's only trees that stay and cannot move. Hmm. I'm telling you, you would find a better school. You will find a better if if it's not the school now, but you will find a better teacher. You will find a better place. Your child cannot thrive in that kind of place. Yeah. You'll be doing a great disservice. Trust me, your child cannot thrive in that kind of place. Yeah. Your child cannot thrive in a place where she is not loved because that's the kind of child she is. There are some children that don't mind though. They will beat. They will fight. Even if you are teaching them to be calm at home, but mm -hmm. when they see injustice, they will face it. Mm -hmm. All right. But your child is not like that. Her temperament does not her love language mm. is no violence please mm. Thank you. So that, that teacher does not love your child please do what is best for your child not what is best for the school do mm. what is best for your own child all right mm. not what is best for the school not what's best for the class or not what the teacher likes mm. okay yes, thank all you right. so much i'm grateful i hope it helps all yes right. mm -hmm. thank you